Monsieur le chef du gouvernement, c'est un grand privilège de vous accueillir. Mr. Head of Government, it's a great pleasure for us to welcome you to this annual meeting in Davos. We are entering a decade of crucial action to ensure that the world can obtain a sustainable future, and no solution that is not inclusive can be brought without the momentum and ambition of African peoples and communities. The youngest continent in the world with the fastest growth. The Kingdom of Morocco is a brick in the connection between nations of the world. And for that reason, Mr. Prime Minister, we are delighted to have you with us today. Mr. President of the World Economic Forum, dear Klaus Schwab, ladies, gentlemen, I am very happy to be speaking uh, here in 2023, and let me wish you all my very best wishes for the, the new year. 2023 will be a year when our collective and individual duty uh, will be to be optimistic. Our world has been shaken up by successive crises, the COVID pandemic, the war in Ukraine, the uh, rise in energy and commodity prices, as well as global warming. The relationships between states are deeply fragmented, and the risk of fragmentation also strikes our societies, where feeling the feeling of inequality and exclusion persists in many parts of the population. The development of new technologies and their ability to transform our daily lives is accelerating and requires from us adaptation that is both fast and vital. Ladies and gentlemen, as a, a person, as all of us, as uh, persons responsible for economic and political development, uh, we have a duty. And the media question us, of course, and the peoples question us. How can we turn these challenges into opportunities? And in the longer term, what is the ideal of peace and prosperity that we can guarantee to our future generations? Because we must simultaneously Note two things. One, globalization is not always a happy moment. It does not always uh, keep its promises. And uh, un contrary to the myth of the end of history, everything remains to be done. And Morocco and Africa more broadly must write their own history. Ladies and gentlemen, the huge task before us, in this huge task, Morocco is an ideal partner to build a response that is both economic, uh, political, environmental and social. We live in a multipolar world, the Kingdom, under the enlightened leadership of His Majesty King Mohammed VI, has become a regional model. We have built modern democratic institutions. Our constitution, voted in 2011, proves so, or the reform of the Family Code, are all groundbreaking at the service of equality and human rights. Regionalization, advanced regionalization, allows us to uh, bring participatory democracy deep in the heart of our communities. We have built infrastructure in the best world-class infrastructure, connectivity, sea, land, and air, 2,000 kilometers of uh, motorways, the first high-speed train line in Africa, the largest Mediterranean seaport, and very soon a very large port on the Atlantic Ocean, as well as 14 international airports, which uh, provide the ability uh, to uh, travel across Africa. These infrastructures have allowed Morocco to 
to obtain a very attractive tourist sector, a high performance industry, a, a fantastic agricultural sector, industry in the automotive and uh, aerospace sectors. Uh, we have also established relations of trust, uh, uh, establishing Morocco as a trusted partner in Africa, particularly where His Majesty King Mohammed VI uh, has traveled across a Africa extensively, 50 visits, cooperation agreements have been signed in the struggle against protectionism in Africa, the SLECAF, the greatest uh, free trade area has been founded. There are trade agreements with the European Union, the United States, and this uh, free trade area now opens access to 2 billion consumers. Morocco has also become a leader in sustainable development, economic and human development, Huge challenges for our generation. Renewable energies now account for 38% of our energy mix, and our ambition is to reach 50% by 2030. We are working hard for peace and security in the region, but also in the broader world by contributing to a dialogue between civilizations and working for a rapprochement between cultures, religions and peoples which live together uh, in uh, peace in, across uh, the Kingdom of Morocco. Morocco has all of the assets to work with its partners to uh, turn challenges into opportunities. At the crossroads of Africa, Europe, the Atlantic Ocean, its uh, strategic, strategic position uh, uh, gives it a, a, a place of choice in the value chains of the world. It has some of the most abundant and uh, cheapest resources in the world which will uh, help uh, in the development of hydrogen, of green hydrogen. Morocco will also be a key player in decarbonization of the world. We must offer a new ideal, a new political compact to the future generations so that they can project themselves optimistically into the future. Morocco under the leadership of its sovereign, is now entering a new phase of its development through the edification of a social state. In one year, our government followed the royal agenda with regulatory, a regulatory framework for mandatory social security and rights open to two-thirds of the population who have benefited, who until now did not benefit from uh, this uh, welfare state. We want to go further and also generalize family benefits through efficient targeting of uh, welfare benefits. Our government has also faced with great determination the multiple crises of 2022, the energy crisis, with uh, rising prices, the climate, uh, with uh, the worst drought in 40 years, the monetary crisis with the return of inflation, we have worked to, to support uh, through budget measures and we've managed to preserve our macroeconomic uh, balances and our priority reforms. Our government has guaranteed supply, has contained inflation and is continuing to work on uh, reducing its deficits. We are also continuing to invest in the future. Morocco has a national health system that is entirely necessary for the reform of uh, social protection. In 2023, one-third of the government's budget has been allocated to health and education, $7 billion dedicated to that. These considerable resources must be better used to upgrade our education system, strengthen its performance. Our objective is to rebuild trust in public education and uh, strengthen uh, the skills of all school children. All of these social reforms were facilitated by an in a major institutional advance because the government has chosen to strengthen social dialogue with the main, tr the main trade unions, 
We listen, we negotiate, and we move together. Ladies and gentlemen, in Mor Morocco, we are well aware of uh, the place, the position we wish to occupy in the world, and this is why we have a new investment charter, a new attractive and incentivizing framework for international and national investors, be they large or small. That is also what we're aiming to obtain with our reforms, to simplify tax rules and uh, place them at the best world-class standards by reducing uh, the tax pressure on uh, SMEs, which are, of course, key growth drivers. But we have also, we are also fully aware of the challenges that lie ahead that will require us uh, to improve the future and the present with new opportunities, less uh, grey economy, more creative industry. The new and old economy are coming head on. And as you said, uh, dear Mr. Schwab, in your book, The Fourth Industrial Revolution, the question of youth has become, more than ever, crucial in any consistent and inclusive development project. In the image of what Morocco wishes to develop by 2035, by creating stronger links between economics and social aspects, with as a guiding thread the environmental transition, which has become so very necessary. And this ambition, of course, poses many questions. How can the market uh, release its creative energy while also protecting our countries from a new major crisis. These are the great challenges we are facing. We must streamline things for the economy, but we must also remain very vigilant in the face of risks uh, that emerge from the new economy. I think the lesson to be drawn from this is that the world is no longer a world to be dominated, it is a world to be shared. That is what Morocco is striving for, a, uh, an inclusive and sustainable society driven by the vision of His Majesty Mohammed VI, who, call, who is calling for an equal partnership with uh, our various partners. And again, let me uh, state my consideration, availability, as uh, His Majesty's government members all are. And uh, let me assure you that we are deeply committed to work with you in uh, your investments through the acceleration of reforms, the continuous improvement of our investments, of your investments, to uh, create value together. Many thanks. Uh, Mr. Head of Government, I think we are all impressed by this uh, project in Morocco, these reform plans. Uh, they are not just plans, they are uh, delivering results that are already very visible. I am very happy that we now have time for a few questions. Um, and I'm sure you have already, already touched upon some of these points in your speech, but let me ask you, last year, Morocco entered the continental free trade area, the African free trade area, and I now believe that uh, there are more than around 50 members now, and it is the largest uh, free trade agreement in the world. What prospects do you envision um, with uh, this uh, new uh, area, the CAFTA? Uh, uh, you talked about Africa more broadly in your speech. What do you think the true meaning of this free trade agreement is? Morocco truly believes 
uh, in uh, a positive future for Africa. Africa can feed the world in future if uh, farming investments are made. Morocco uh, has uh, vast human resources. Um, it is a very large market. Africa trades with the rest of the world, 60%, and intra-African trade is only 16%. This uh, free trade area is a fantastic initiative, a transformative initiative for Africa to uh, boost investment and trade. And I believe that Africa's potential and, in fact, the importance that we grant uh, to uh, the continent with uh, His Majesty the King uh, more than uh, 50 state visits in 50 African nations. Uh, in African nations, uh, uh, more than a thousand agreements were also signed, and that positions Morocco as one of the greatest investors in Africa, notably West Africa. Africa has huge potential for the future, and the free trade area uh, will be a uh, watershed moment for, in Africa's uh, growth. Uh, Mr. Head of Government, uh, usually countries, or in general, countries find it very hard to reach the targets of the Paris Accords in uh, reducing uh, the temperature by 1.5 degrees. But Morocco, I think, is uh, on the right path. What is your secret? Uh, because you are an exception. Well, Morocco, just after its independence, uh, His Majesty uh, King Hassan II uh, had already uh, started uh, a very ambitious uh, dam building policy, making, making hydropower very important in our country. Uh, there were adjustments after that um, with the desertification, uh, but there was uh, acceleration thanks to King Mohammed VI with a plan that imposed, uh, that asked the various governments to invest in uh, wind and solar power. We have now reached 38 percent in our energy mix from green energy, and uh, the target set by His Majesty the King, and for which we're working on, is uh, by 2030 to reach 50 or 52 percent of renewables in the energy mix. It is possible, uh, first because Morocco is a uh, very favorable to renewable renewables, uh, 3,000 hours of sunshine in Morocco. Uh, the sun is about 5 kilowatt hours per square meter. It's one of the places in the world where uh, we can have uh, an offering uh, where uh, producing energy also through the speed and uh, constancy of winds in Morocco uh, that will provide uh, some of the cheapest renewables in the world uh, for uh, renewable power production. And then the government is also working under the guidance of the sovereign to develop an offering uh, an offering uh, uh, for power a comprehensive uh, offering, and we're going to try to find uh, something to find, God willing. Um, Mr. Head of Government, you have been very successful in attracting foreign businesses, Oracle, Renault, uh, Opal, and so on. You mentioned in your uh, speech the importance of the fourth industrial revolution. What does that imply uh, for uh, uh, to attract foreign investments? Do, are you aiming to become a supplier of high technology uh, in the in semiconductors, for instance? What is your vision of Morocco 
in terms of uh, production. I believe that the most important thing is to set up a secure and uh, framework for investors with great visibility. An investment charter has just been passed by Parliament to provide visibility, to encourage uh, investment in uh, Moroccan communities um, in the interests of sustainable development and employment. And uh, there will be strong government support for these investments. There are multiple sectors. I uh, named a few, um, aerospace, the automotive industry, agriculture, Morocco has an agricultural uh, green generation development plan, the transformation of uh, uh, fish and seafoods, electronics. When all of this fits uh, and uh, furthers the interests of sustainable development and job creation, well, Morocco will support these initiatives, first of all, through uh, a powerful decentralization, regionalization, so that decisions can be taken in the field to facilitate investment, but also to uh, try and identify and pinpoint processes uh, where uh, investments uh, can be uh, made easier. Uh, Mr. Head of Government, Morocco was very good uh, compared to other countries to, in managing the COVID crisis. It did very well. What could you uh, tell us about that? What were the key learnings of your experience? During the COVID pandemic, uh, His Majesty the King uh, asked uh, for appeal to the generosity of our people. Uh, we managed to collect around $3 billion, which helped to support the local population. Uh, which, uh, of course, was finding that period very difficult. Uh, factories were shut down, but also to work uh, to, in fighting the disease itself, because uh, 1.5 billion was dedicated to the consequences of COVID. It was an opportunity which uh, we managed to seize. Major investments will be made in healthcare with uh, the local manufacturing of uh, vaccines, up to one billion doses a year that can be exported elsewhere in Africa, but also through our healthcare system. Our new legislation is uh, deeply modifying uh, our models of governance so that we can better, uh, so that we can improve patient pathways uh, provincially, regionally or locally, and also increase investments in human resources, and notably doctors. Uh, the whole world needs these types of developments, and we too are fighting to better train, to train more, and to try to retain our physicians by making their careers more attractive. And therefore, uh, what took place with COVID generated opportunities for us to transform our healthcare sector. Mr. Head of Government, as certainly many people in this room, I followed with great interest the World Cup. And, uh, of course, we were all deeply impressed by uh, Morocco's national football team. It's uh, a symbol of what uh, you were talking about in your speech and in your answers to our questions, because I think you were the very first African and uh, Arab world team to qualify. Uh, for uh, the uh, World Cup semi-finals. What do you think that means for Morocco? 
First of all, it is true that we were ourselves surprised. Morocco has always had a great football team. Uh, it's not by chance. Uh, there's been a lot of investment, a lot of uh, supervision, followed very closely by uh, our sovereign. We have uh, training schools which we have professionalized nationally, notably uh, the school uh, that bears the name of uh, His Majesty Mohammed VI, um, with some great players who play in some of the world's greatest clubs. Uh, so we had a good team, but in all of these games, uh, there were multiple games because, of course, the players uh, uh, were truly engaged with a fighting spirit. Uh, they went out there uh, to win, to succeed. There was really uh, this uh, very strong determination to win, but all of that was done joyfully. Uh, they listened to. Uh, the public. You know, every time Morocco would win a match, there were at least a million people in the streets of Morocco celebrating uh, our victory. And that exchange was extremely important to us. And it truly expressed values of engagement, of solidarity, but also values of uh, the relationship that we have with our mothers, with our wives, and it really showed how important women are in our society. There was not a, ga a single game that ended uh, with uh, the players uh, going to embrace their mothers or their wives to share that victory with them. It was a fantastic moment for Morocco, and I think it really expresses values uh, that all uh, businesses and states wish to express, but what we felt deep in our hearts uh, during that World Cup was that there was great sympathy for our national team and uh, many thanks for your sympathy. Well, Mr. Head of Government, I think we would all like to wish you uh, on behalf of all of our participants to wish you every success uh, and victories that are as great as the victories uh, you have uh, obtained in football, in your energy transition program, in your education program, which you mentioned too, and also in your industrialization process. So many thanks uh, to you for attending this annual meeting in Davos, and uh, we wish you all the best.